in Chicago, there continue to be communities where it's very difficult to find a doctor or a medical provider. Some options do exist, but not as many as you might find in other communities. PCC Community Wellness Center provides care here in Austin and in other neighborhoods to make sure everyone has access to medical care. In its 25th year, PCC continues to make a powerful difference. This is a very special time, a special year. Tell us about the significance of what all of this means here at PCC. It's a time to not only reflect on what we've accomplished, but where are we going? What are we going to do? What's the difference in people's lives that PCC is going to make? Our, our docs don't just uh, prescribe a medication for blood pressure, don't even just necessarily talk about uh, diet and exercise, but we talk about what role does stress have in that person's life. We recognize uh, that our patient may live in a neighborhood where it's not safe to exercise, where they don't have access to healthy foods. And so our residents tend to be fairly socially active and um, get involved not only in providing patients the education about those behaviors, but going out into the community and trying to change some of those factors um, if they can. Talk about your staff. Absolutely. You know, the staff is very unselfish. They're hard workers and they're dedicated to the services that we provide. I couldn't be more proud of every staff member here at PCC. So one of my goals after graduating school was to definitely come back into the community and give back to my community. Being a nurse at PCC is just, it's rewarding. I can actually go in the room with them and relate to them. And it also gives my community a chance to actually see that someone out of their community actually made it to a professional level. And so I, I faced every obstacle that they faced, you know, in terms of not being able to, you know, afford good health care. Um, not being able to afford food, not being able to afford housing, things like that. But coming to PCC, we actually help them with those things. As a care manager, I at times will go out into the community to conduct home visits to make sure that they make their appointment or to see why they have missed. I'm comfortable with going to the homes and it kind of gives them the idea, hey, they really care, she actually came to my house. One thing that I really want to emphasize with you, Jeff, is the urban farm. It demonstrated to the community that we were willing to come outside of our four walls to help patients learn to eat differently. What has the birth center added to what you're already doing here? Well, given that it's the first, we were the first birthing center in the state of Illinois, there was a certain amount of notoriety that was given to PCC. It didn't, and have birth within a very um, family-oriented environment. The Farm and Birthing Center are part of 11 locations PCC established to better care for patients in underserved communities. Why is it important to continue to evolve? My belief is that you need to be responsive to the needs of the community and to the environment. Whether it's in establishing a new primary care site or in establishing a new program, uh, these are things that are outgrowths of demand. Uh, that happened at our Steinmetz site, at our school-based health center. We weren't particularly looking to expand services, but that uh, school board, which was very active, noted a lack of primary care for their students in that site, and so approached us about opening a location there. A lot of these kids, instead of worrying about being your regular teenager that goes to high school and plays football at, at the end of the school day, they're worried about going to their job after school and making some money so they can help the parents or going home because their mom has to go to the second shift and they have to look after their four other siblings. Um, so there's a lot of um, uh, challenged uh, home situations that the kids face and that increases the rate of anxiety, depression. Another impending issue is that of opioid abuse. In the summer of 2016, PCC responded by opening its chemical dependency clinic. We're working in the epicenter of the opioid epidemic. So if we're not treating the substance use disorder itself, we're seeing its implications. We're seeing a higher rate of violence. We're seeing more frequent ER visits for opioid overdoses. So it just made sense that we would tackle this problem head on. I'm almost 62 years old and I started using heroin when I was 17. It cost me. Uh, it cost me everything I had. I worked uh, in uh, making methamphetamine when it was real popular uh, down in Texas. Uh, 
I, I've seen the I've seen the results of it. Uh, that it's just it just totally it just totally tears up your body and destroys it. And that's what helped lead me to get uh, using heroin is using methamphetamine, uh, commonly known on the street as speed, crystal meth, crank. But uh, I've been on Suboxone now for almost one year, and I've been clean ever since I uh, started using this Suboxone. What I found here at PCC is that they're they're not judgmental. Because I'm usually one of when the average person, you know, I hear the word drug addict or junkie, you know, it's automatically they're you know they're bad people, you know, the hell with them. But uh, here they they make an effort. Every resource that's available, they will they will extend out to you. It's just up to you to take advantage of it and try to help yourself a little bit too. Ken uh, is someone who I think has been wildly successful here at the chemical dependency clinic and not a visit goes by where I don't tell him how proud I am of how far he's come. I saw him at what I consider the lowest of lows and to see him now thriving is just really a testament to the services that we provide and the team that we have. If PCC never came here, if you didn't exist, what would this place be like? PCC, you know, we're, we're, we're um, providing care to almost 50,000 patients. And it's, where would those patients go? Where would they get care? Most likely they would go to an emergency room. Well, that, that's more episodic. That's not primary care. And it doesn't um, address any preventive aspects of medicine. So I'd be, I'd be very concerned. I think the community would be in worse shape. Um, if there was no PCC, I hate to even think about what that would be um, because this is my community. I can't imagine it without the kind of primary care that we provide. Uh, I, I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for the help that I've got. Whew. Well, um, I, I, that's an easy, sort of an easy answer for me. Um, I actually was a student at that high school when I first moved here from Peru and I didn't have a clinic to go to and I know that at the time um, I was very stressed out. I was in a way alienated because I didn't speak the language. You know, I worry that um, if it weren't for places like PCC, <clears throat> a lot of these children would not have a place to go to. <laughs> if they didn't have the safe place that it is the school clinic now, um, I just worry of where they're going to go. I hope that because of our presence at Steinmetz that I hope that a few more kids have not ended their lives. Um, I hope that a few more kids have seen that they can get better with help and therapy and medical care so that hopefully they can become healthy, productive members of our society. You can celebrate 25 years, but the next 25 years to keep the organization strong, to keep it viable, to keep it in position to be able to meet the needs of the community. That's what it's all about. And that's our challenge. <laughs>